Today, I'll show you a step-by-step -step walkthrough of a simple live streaming setup, similar to what we do in church during this season. So buckle up and enjoy the ride! Hi, my name is Rolf and welcome to my channel. If you haven't watched my intro video about the content of this channel, I'll put the link right here. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and share this video. Thank you so much! Before we start, I'd like to give an overview of this video. We will discuss, number one, the equipment and programs needed for this live stream. Number two, setting up your equipment and apps. Number three, execution. For this video, we will not discuss in detail how to use the programs. Those will be for another discussion. Let me give you a brief background on how we ended up having a church services live stream. When I arrived from our family vacation from NZ last March 14, it was one day before the lockdown here in Manila, Philippines. Like everyone else, we had no idea that life as we know it would change. Our wedding events were moved or canceled. My team would work from home and more importantly, our Sunday services would be online. So shout out to Facebook. We did not have all the resources, but I improvised. What I would usually study for months, we had to do in one to two weeks. Philippians 4.13 Days before our first online service, I dug into a mountain of old tech cables and discovered that the stuff I bought long ago that I thought were already useless, but lo and behold, it was exactly what I needed for this season. And also, we got some stuff from Lazada and Shopee. Baka naman! It is God who gives us the wisdom and so I started to learn from Google and YouTube. Skills can be learned but attitude must be developed first. For our first online Sunday service, things did not go as planned. And I was so frustrated and discouraged. But you know, going back to that verse, Philippians 4.13. From there, I did more studying and then the rest is history. It is okay to fail. But remember, learn the lesson and rise from it. We were made to overcome. Our objective for this video is to create a live streaming setup in the shortest time possible with limited resources that can be managed by two to three people. So before we get excited and go to shops and online apps, let us first find what gadgets we need. Devices and equipment needed. Number one, laptop. In our church, I use a mid-2014 Apple MacBook Pro, which is my workhorse throughout my work. It's okay to also have a Windows computer as long as the specs are high enough that it can handle live streaming. Specs of my MacBook Pro is posted here. The reason you need a powerful device is because it should handle loads of data coming in and out of the computer. Personally, just my opinion, I would recommend Apple computers. Because they are fast and very reliable. Baka naman, Apple! I love that it's a powerful machine that can handle multitasking even when using all the ports which I will be discussing later. If you're using your laptop for more than three years, you have maximized its use. I have been using my Mac for seven years, so it's really worth it. Next is camera. We use two Sony A65 cameras with Sony 18105 f4 lens since that's what we have. You don't need a very powerful camera like this as long as it shoots 720p or 1080p 13 frames per second and it has a mini or micro HDMI out and a micro USB slot as well for charging the camera to a power bank or an extension cord outlet. There are a lot of camera brands out there like Logitech for webcams, Canon, Nikon, Fujifilm, BMPCC, 
Can you use webcams? My answer is yes. Even it does not have a micro or mini HDMI, it just has a micro USB, you still can use it. It would be a little laggy, but it will do its job. Number three, capture card. Now my churchmate, Kuya Glyn, lent me his capture card long ago, but I was not able to use it until this season. We are using YNH EasyCap 261 USB 3.0 Video Game Capture Card. I'll post a link below. A capture card is used to convert an HDMI high-definition video signal to a compressed file data to be sent to the internet. I bought another one for my second camera and it worked perfectly. So during service, we do a two-cam setup with one operator. The more popular and expensive one is the Elgato Cam Link. This is not the usual setup to do it, but we tried it because we had limited resources and it worked. So thank you, Lord. The more conventional way to live stream your video to the internet is to use switches like the ATM Mini or the ATM Mini Pro, AV Matrix, the Roland, Stream Live, etc. You can order it at Joseph Filters. They will make your life easier, but will cost you a little more. Number four, audio interface. We use Focusrite for our audio. I borrowed this from my brother-in-law, who is my poser. The model that we use is Focusrite 2i2 first gen, which we connect it to a laptop. What I like about this interface is that it is a plug and play device. No more setups needed. You can use other audio interfaces as well. These are the accessories we use. HDMI cables, Thunderbolt to HDMI connector, Thunderbolt to LAN connector, a USB 3.0 hub, an Android or micro USB charger, some connectors, tripods, application. These are what you're going to use for live streaming videos. There are a lot of softwares out there, but the ones we use are OBS, ProPresenter, and Facebook. Let's go to the apps and software streaming platform. OBS is an open broadcast software that you can download without any additional cost. This is where you put all your videos, audio announcements. OBS is the one that communicates to the social media platform that you are streaming into. Next is ProPresenter. ProPresenter is a platform that displays your lyrics, slides, and your media stuff. We set it up to communicate with OBS with just one click. That's what I love about Max. Other platforms you can use are Easy Worship, OpenLP. Then last is Facebook. This is the best social media platform where you can air your Sunday service. There are also other sites where you can do live videos like YouTube and Instagram. So that's it for the equipment and apps we need. So for a break, I love drinking coffee. My favorite is Sagada Brew by Kerid Kid. I'll just put the link below. And also thank you to Bakes and Berries for my blueberry cheesecake. I'll also put the link below. So, break muna tayo. Mmm. 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 Stop. Mmm. Ainit. <laughs> Ang init. Whew. Parang ako. Sma. Bakes and Berries. Facebook page. Carried Kid. Facebook page. Hindi ko pa boss, but we can now start with the setup stage. So, let's set up. In 3, 2, 1.
open OBS, go to OBS Word, then preferences, or the other way to go to settings on your control window, go to output tab, set video bitrate to 2500 kbps, and audio bitrate to 128. Shade enable advanced encoder settings and enforce streaming service bitrate limits. Encoder preset set to very fast. Then as you scroll down, you will see the recording window. Choose a recording path for your recorded streaming. Then recording quality set to high quality medium file size. Recording format to MKV. Encoder set to software X264. Go to audio tab, general. Sample rate set to 48 kHz, channel set to mono, go to mic auxiliary audio, and set it to Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. Go to video tab, set base canvas to 1280 by 720, output scaled to 1280 by 720, downscale filter choose Lancos, sharpened scaling 36 samples, Common frames per second value set to 30. Hot keys. Go to quick transition fade. Use a custom key here which you seldom use when typing. Go to stream tab service. Then choose Facebook Live. Then get stream key. Your web browser will pop up. Click create live stream on the left side of your browser and put it on share to a page you manage. Make sure you were assigned as an admin on your FB page. Then next, drop down and choose the page you want your live stream to be seen. Put a title and say something about the video. On the setup options window, make sure you check persistent stream key. Then copy the stream key on the live stream set window. Go back to OBS settings, then stream tab, then paste the code to the stream key. Then click apply. Don't close your browser. Every time you use OBS, make sure to double check your settings. Now, let us proceed to creating a scene and setting up OBS, ProPresenter, and our audio. Create a scene and label it as Scene 1. Then on Sources, add the video capture device and label it as Cam 1 or A. Properties for video capture device, go to drag down device, choose Easy Capture. For preset, use 1280 by 720, then click OK. Repeat this process if you have two cams set up and make sure to rename it Scene 2 and Cam 2 or B. From here, let us move on to Pro Presenter. Open Pro Presenter, go to Preferences, then Display tab, then check the box that says Enable Cypher. That's it, we're good to go. Go back to OBS, make sure you do not close the Pro Presenter program. When you open OBS, go to Scene 1, then add a Siphon client under the Sources tab. After that, you will be prompted by a property screen, select Drag Down Source, choose Pro Presenter, then Shade Allow Transparency, then click OK. Now OBS and ProPresenter are linked. Make sure you are ready with your slides, announcements, and lyrics. Let's then go to audio. Go to your Apple logo, then click System Preferences. Go to Sound and make sure to set the input, output to Focusrite Scarlett to i2. An important note is that you won't be able to adjust your volume internally, so you need to work with your audio technician. Then go back to OBS, then go to Audio Mixer window. You will see Mic Auxiliary. Right-click on the Settings logo and go to Advanced Audio Properties. Go to Audio Monitoring. Make sure it is set to Monitor and Output so it can bring out the sound from the mixer. Most importantly, you have a strong internet connection. Make sure that you are wired in and never use Wi-Fi for live streaming. We're all done with the setup. Time for execution where we run through the service flow and incorporate all the things we've learned. Make sure you have at least an hour to get ready before you go live. Also make sure to test it first and work together as a team. It is okay to make mistakes, then improve what you can improve. Now that we're all done with the setup, time for execution where we run through the service flow and incorporate all the things we've learned. For us, our flow goes like this. We start with uh, a 10 or 15 minute announcements loop 
with original music or intro video if you have. Then we go live with welcome, spiel, and opening prayer. Then we start with praise and worship, then the word, then announcements, then shout outs at the end. You of course have your own program in church. This is just a sample of what we do. So and these are my capture cards. That's how I do it, Pro Presenter, then OBS, uh, I monitor the audio also as well, and I have a multi-view window monitor here, then Facebook, so I can check if it's still uh, streaming. So that's it. If you've reached the end of this video, congratulations! We pray that you have learned from this and will be able to apply it to your live streaming setup. I will also do more videos focusing on important programs or equipment for live streaming. I would also love it if you can share your ideas and suggestions on how you do your church live stream. So uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to my channel and God bless and see you on our next video.